Welcome to the Ignite Your Life podcast. Here we interview successful people who are living a life filled with adventure, excitement and fun. Learn where they're being. Explore where they are going. See what gets them out of bed in the morning. Find out what drives them. We will go through their lowest points and we will look at the opportunities and possibilities that are now presenting to them. Come on a journey of ignition. I'm your host, Leanne Blaney. For more information, go to ignitepodcast.com. Let's ignite. Kerry Yarsley has studied biochemistry, microbiology, education and computers at university. After marriage, she worked as a systems programmer and attained fitness leaders qualifications and trained in martial arts. Over two decades later, Kerry is still enjoying writing and learning new things. She has more recent diplomas in business and project management and also has a variety of interests including music, art and further martial arts. Kerry has learned how to deal with a stressful environment the hard way after a period of time when she developed epilepsy. Without taking any drugs, she was able to change that painful experience into one that has brought more joy, emotional and mental release and knowledge than she could ever have imagined. Hi, Kerry. Welcome to the Ignite Your Life podcast. Thank you, Leanne. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I'm really excited to share your story. So shall we get started? Yes, let's do it. All right, let's do it. So where are you now? Tell us what's happening for you right now. Uh, well, at the moment, I'm in on the Gold Coast, a uh, beautiful place, of, part of the world. And um, what's happening to me right now, uh, I'm actually looking for, for work. So <laughs> if you've got anyone who needs a, a contact technical writer, let me know. Um, but, yeah. but I'm keeping busy doing um, freelance editing and, um, you know, and other volunteer type work. So what about your story? Where have you been to get to this point? Uh, well, it started off... Uh, how far do you want to go back? <laughs> Whatever you like. <laughs> Whatever you like. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, I was Melbourne born and raised. I did. Uh, I wasn't particularly studious or academic, um, although I was always encouraged. My uh, my parents always wanted me to get a good education, and I'm the youngest of three kids. So uh, my elder brother and sister were very studious and were very. Uh, brilliant, I suppose I could say. My my elder brother was an aeronautical engineer, and my sister did. Um, she specialised in uh, periodontics, um, so she's a, a very special dentist. Anyway, and me, I just mm, sort of stumbled my way through a science degree, and um, and ended up um, doing a diploma of education, and then um, and then I actually found. Uh, computer science so I did and this is back in the uh, yeah right in the start of the 80s so uh, computer systems were not really well known at the time PCs hadn't start, hadn't been invented yet uh, we, and I, I got a job with uh, an airline called TAA way back if anybody can remember back then um, I suppose it's a bit like Jetstar these days. You know, it was one of our, uh, not necessarily a low budget, but it was one of our uh, national carriers as opposed to Qantas, which was our only international carrier. Mm. That was something that I really found a passion for. I um, I loved the programming side of things and I became uh, very, because uh, I'm a detailed sort of person, I love dotting my I's and crossing my T's and um, I suppose that's... Um, why I like the writing side of things as well. But anyway, before I jump into that, yeah, so I um, uh, I then got married and we had uh, seven years of wedded bliss before kids came along. Mm-hmm. So, uh, And then I had four of them in six years. So um, we, we always wanted to have four. And um, interestingly enough, I actually found an old journal just last week where I'd written down prior to having my children, what I actually wanted. And it was amazing how when I'd actually written down, you know, that I wanted four children and I wanted to be boy or girl, boy, girl, and they all turned out that way. And I wanted my pregnancies to all be, um, you know, clear and um, uncomplicated and, and all the births to be, you know, fantastic and quick and, you know. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think, um, you know, if people want to, if they've got a goal in mind or if they've got a, a certain thing that they want, make sure you write it down and write it down clearly because it makes, it does make a difference, you know, whether it's just 
mentally you're focused on that. Um, and sometimes you can write it down only once and tuck it away in a drawer and forget about it. But from my perspective, I definitely believe the universe has got some plan out there. And, you know, if you give it any, you know, a hint on what you want, it'll help to make that happen for you, you know, if you let it. So um, then we moved to Queensland when my youngest was six months old. And because uh, he, my younger son was starting to get a bit of asthmatic type symptoms, and we thought, oh look, we'll move away from the big city and the cold. We'll come up to the warmth of Queensland, and um, and we'll see how it goes. And we had been up here a few times, and winters up here were just brilliant. Um, not like Melbourne winters, which tend to last for about eight or nine months of the year. Um, these winters were just beautiful blue skies during the day, and then it might get cool at night and rain a little bit, but that's about it. You know, so I thought, yeah, that's me. I can deal with that. At that time, I had just started doing contract technical writing because I couldn't do the programming. I went back part-time a little bit, but it was a bit hard with kids, obviously, to, to go into. At the time where we were, we were driving sort of 40 minutes a day uh, each way, I should say, to get to work. Um, and as much as we used childcare and um other we actually had a nanny for a little while who was a friend who just came around and, and looked after the kids so that made it really helpful um for any working mums you know you can do it you just need to have a good team around you and and uh, yeah yeah so i suppose what i'm trying to build up here is my life started to evolve or revolve around the children more and more and even though I was working I was trying to work from home as much as I could um, but then when that became impossible and I had to go to work sites um, yeah we had again as I said before we, we found people to help with the team effort looking after the kids and doing that sort of thing it wasn't impossible but it just made it a little bit harder I, I probably contracted with um, Gold Coast City Council for maybe four or five years in different roles. And, um, and then after I had, um, after I'd finished one stint with them, I decided I would write um, the instruction manual for kids, which is the book that I have, have wrote back in 2011. Um, because I'd been writing a lot of instruction manuals anyway, because that was part of the, the work that I was doing. I thought I'd combine the two. Um, I had a bit of time off, so I thought I would, you know, with my love of the children as well as my sort of detailed mindset, I guess, I thought I, I would write that. Um, because it just seemed that we needed it more and more. There were a lot of the, the people that I were working with were starting with new families and they would ask me certain questions. And sometimes it would be repeated. So I think, okay, well, there's a lot of um, similarities in, in what they're asking, the problems that they, they were con being confronted by. So I thought, well, if I just put something together to help, um, you know, a few people, it might, it might be useful. I thought it would be about 100 pages or something less. I didn't want anything too daunting. Ended up being about, I think at that time, about 364 pages or so. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But um, I, I, I suppose, as I say, I'm a bit of a detailed person and once I start on something, I like to make it very clear. Uh, as much as the, it's written simplistically, or not simplistically, simply, I like it, things to be easily read, you know, if people can understand it very. My background in the sciences, I did microbiology and biochemistry, so I also brought in... Um, I suppose it's a bit of an opinion, um, but it is based on science. Um, the fact that a lot of what is being um, mooted by advertising agencies about sterilising your home and making sure it's all germ-free and all this sort of stuff is counterproductive to a good and healthy immune system. And, um, you know, people need to understand that if they want their children to be happy and healthy, they've got actually got to get out there and play in the mud, quite literally, um, and not to be too concerned that, oh, dear, they've eaten some dirt or they've, 
you know, swallowed something that, or they've, you know, I mean, some people go a bit far by letting their toddlers run around the um, the shopping centres and, and lick the floor and things like that. I, I don't really condone that. But, I mean, in your own home, you don't need to have it antiseptically clean because all, what that tends to do, um, and this is just from anecdotal evidence that I've recognised or observed, um, if your house is sterile, your children don't get exposed to the myriad of, of bugs and germs and viruses and bacteria that are out there. And there's a lot of it out there and a lot of it is very, um, it's not life-threatening. But the one sort of bug that is life-threatening is usually the one that those 99.9% .9 antibacterial sprays don't actually kill off anyway. So all they do is they make the environment cleaner for these more virulent bugs to actually grow because there's no competition between the good bugs, if you like, or the, the less harmful ones. Um, I'd stopped doing the exercise that I'd been doing. Um, my, my eating habits had sort of suffered a bit. Um, I wasn't getting that much sleep, you know, because you was probably getting about six hours in bed, but because menopause was starting to hit, I was also getting hot flushes and um, all that sort of stuff was starting to happen. And I was probably getting closer to about three and a half hours of sleep, which is quite destructive. And in the end, I started to have epileptic seizures because my, um, my body just said, nah, can't do it anymore. You know, you pushed me too far this time. And um, so I had to stop all of that um, because I don't know if anybody else has had seizures, full grand mile seizures. Um, it's like being hit by a truck. You're laid up for a couple of days anyway and you, you literally can't do anything. The worst thing about it was it, if I can use a, a, a computer phrase, it's like a blue screen of death. Um, for your mind and uh, my memory, um, pretty much my short to medium term memory got wiped. Long term memory, things like my daughter's 21st birthday party were just completely erased. Um, if I saw a photo of um, the party afterwards, then I would say, oh, that person was there and that person was there and that person was there. But... I, if you'd asked me prior to seeing that photo, I wouldn't have been able to recall anybody who was there. I could sort of logically say, okay, well, that person might have been there, but I wouldn't be able to know. And I still can't, I don't know the full list. A little bit um, sad more than anything else because, um, you know, the kids were going through, obviously they're in their later teens and early 20s by that time. So there's a lot of um, when I was, I was actually writing and editing my own book as a technical writer, um, my ego wouldn't let me put it out for anybody else to do the editing on my book. So I, while I was sitting in the car with my husband driving up to Brisbane, I would have my laptop on my lap and I would be editing my book in that hour or so of the, of the car trip each way. I didn't want to waste that time. And, um, I managed to finish off that and then it was the marketing of the book and the stress that was associated with basically the marketing and everything because I'm self-published um, it was just too much so that was sort of the tipping point that tipped me over the edge that you know, the literal straw that broke the camel's back I had to stop all marketing on the book in fact I couldn't remember what I was supposed to do it reminded me of that film 50 first dates where the girl wakes up every morning and she doesn't know who she's lying in bed with. So there's post-it notes everywhere saying, read, you know, watch this video. So it, it gives her an update of what's happened in previous days. And it, was, it wasn't as bad as that in the sense that obviously I knew my family, I knew my husband. And, but if I, I knew if I wanted to do something in a day, if there was some important thing that I had to do, I had to do it in that you know, 16-hour, 18-hour period. And also I did have to sleep long. I, I had to, it was like I was trying to catch up on all the sleep that I'd missed. So I would have to sleep for at least 10 to 12 hours a day just to recover. I chose not to take any drugs because um, 
I think one of the side effects was leukemia on one of the potential drugs. And I thought, no, I think I'll, you know, if, if it's happened because of my lifestyle, because of stresses that I've put on my body, then I'm pretty sure that I can take it off and reverse it out the other way. That was uh, my choice and it took me about it took me about two and a half years, two and a half to three years to actually reverse the negative effects and I got rid of all and I haven't had any seizures now for well over four years. So probably the best thing that I could say it was having coconut oil. I used to have about three tablespoons of that a day and there is a scientific basis of that because if you break down the metabolism of coconut oil, it produces a product called acetylcholine and that acetylcholine is among other parts of your body it's actually in the synaptic gap between your brain cells so it helps to do the transfer of the electrical impulse which gets transferred into a chemical impulse before it gets going to the next cell so it, it was one of those things that I would wake up and it was the after six months of ha starting coconut oil to the time when I had my last seizure I didn't even know that I'd had the seizure, but my, as far as feeling and the recovery, I just basically thought, oh, that's a bit of a nuisance. And then I got up and just went on with my day. So it was completely different with the effects of having that last seizure from, you know, the first six months of having the, um, the coconut oil. So thanks for sharing all that. Um, so what are you looking forward to in the future? Staying healthy, for one thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, I suppose it's pretty obvious. But no, I'd, I'd like to actually go into more children's um, stories because I think there's an awful lot of, um, uh, yeah, what I've learned in the last even just five to six years, it's um, there's so much that we don't know and there's so much that we, um, I suppose, we take for granted and I don't think any of us should take anything for granted, um, you know, anything that, anything that life throws at us. I think if, we have, if we've manifested the right feeling in ourselves, I can see why that attraction, that will attract that same energy to yourself. I can see why things like The Secret, you know, from Brandon Bays and all that, why that can work. Because what you're focusing on and what you're feeling very strongly it happens it will it, it really will work you know and I think if people focus on fear um, in their life then that's what they're going to attract into their life if they focus on everybody being related everybody being friendly and you're feeling safe feelings then you have got nothing to be worried about all right, well, how about we have a change in pace and do the speed round? So what's your favourite book? Uh, actually, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. It used to be one of those things that I would, uh, I would stick the video on. I remember every day when I was working from home, I'd drop the kids off at school or wherever, and then I'd come home and I'd stick the video on for Pride and Prejudice. They'd be just playing in the background while I'm working away on the computer. It was just one of those brilliant... Um, Brilliant books that just put me in a really happy place. Mm. Yeah. Who's a mentor figure that's helped you the most? Mentor figure. I've had quite a few actually, um, but I think probably, you know, to be fair, I think my, my parents have um, both tried in different ways. Uh, Mum from more a spiritual side because she's a, a very strong Buddhist. Um, Dad was, um, he was, brought up Presbyterian, um, but he had, a, he had a strong work ethic. He had a strong sense of um, fairness um, for everybody and he would, he would work very hard for everybody and he would try to be as, you know, as fair as he could and he was a very generous man. You know, if I could be that generous in my life, I, it would be wonderful. Mm. So what daily ritual works best for you? These days I try to do a three or five, three to five K walk with the dogs. Um, that always gets the blood pumping and I, I think that's vitally important, especially go back into the scientific things. They say that if you exercise in the morning, it actually helps to get stem cells going in the base of your brain. And then if you afterwards, if you do some sort of work 
which focuses on a particular part of your brain, those stem cells then become, um, if you like, absorbed into that area. So you can actually help to develop your brain better, whichever area you're focusing on. And, um, and probably one of the other biggest things from a, a mental or spiritual sp- perspective, um, I'm not so good with praying, but um, <laughs> although um, I like to feel grateful um, you know, just before at the end of the day, you know, I, I go through a sort of, if you like, a list of things that I'm really grateful for and, you know, for the health and the well-being of all my kids and my family and all that sort of stuff and and also to focus on um, how every part of my body is uh, is functioning in a perfectly normal way and optimum way. So it, it's just trying to put your mindset in a really good place just before you're going off to sleep. Do you have a favourite food? Yeah, vegetarian. Um, so I, I tend to eat a lot of rice dishes. I probably have rice every day or every other day and uh, stir fries and omelettes, mm. mm. definitely, and lots of veggies. So what's a piece of advice you could give to others to help them make change in their life? I think the biggest advice that I could give is for people to drop their ego because it, it's just too controlling. Um, and it can lead you in the wrong direction. It affects everybody. It doesn't only affect you, but it affects everyone around you. And even though there's times when we can observe our own ego doing the wrong thing, it's so hard to stop it, even if we are aware enough to be able to say, okay, I can see that what I'm saying or hear what I'm saying is not helping this situation, but we get to the point where we can't, we can't cut it because our ego doesn't want to let go of control. So, you know, the, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, to get let go of your ego, be kind to others and consider their needs, you know, or well, you know, as well as your own, um, you know, a balance, everybody says that these days. So, but it is true, you know, if you can be balanced and recognise that it's not a win-lose situation, it can be a win-win. Mm, great advice. All right, well, thank you so much for a valuable time today, Kerry. Would you like to give us the best place to contact you and we'll end it there? Okay, thanks, Leanne. Well, I can be contacted on um, Kerry, K-E-R-R-I, at yarsley, Y-A-R-S-L-E-Y, dot net, N-E-T, and that's it. So that's an email that people can contact me on if they wish. Um, And if you, okay, if you're interested in looking at my book, it is available as a, a paperback, um, an ebook, or a um, an audio book. Go to www.instructionmanual the number four kids dot com dot au. So it's all one word instruction manual, and then there's no gaps or anything, and then it's just the number four, and then kids k i d s dot com dot au. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Igniters, Kerry is passionate about kids and loves to share the message that they do not have to be kept in a sterile environment, but let them get out and play in the mud. They'll be healthier and happier, something I truly believe too. If you want to find out more about her book, go to www.instructionmanualforkids.com.au or email her at kerry at yarsley.net. If you want to learn what inner balance is so that you can have calm within the chaos of our ever-changing world, Go to my website, www.leanneblaney.com.